Hello there, welcome to this tutorial on A-level photosynthesis. This is part 2 of the video. If you haven't watched part 1, I highly recommend you do to better understand the flow. Link is in the description below. The first five aims are covered in my previous video, but in this video we will look at the processes that occur during the light-dependent and the light-independent reaction. So let's get started. There are two stages to photosynthesis. First is the light-dependent reaction, which occurs in the granum. And this is divided into photoionization and photolysis, followed by photophosphorylation and the production of reduced NADP, also known as NADPH. Secondly, we have the light independent reaction, which occurs in the stroma, and this is summarized by the Calvin cycle. Now let's understand photoionization and photolysis. This is complex, so I'll talk through this slowly. Photoionization is where molecules lose electrons using light energy. This process starts in Photosystem 2, also known as PS2, not PlayStation 2 by the way. Photosystems are essentially chlorophyll protein complexes. Due to the scope of A-level, you only need to know the name and what it does, and nothing more. Once they absorb photons, i.e. particles of light, their electrons get excited and are lost. These electrons travel down the electron transport chain via electron carriers. Again, you don't need to remember the names of the electron carriers. The energy released by the electrons as they travel down the carriers is used to transport protons into the thylakoid. So that is photoionization. Photolysis, which occurs simultaneously, describes the breakdown of water using light energy. This process too releases electrons, however these are used to reduce photosystem 2, that is provide the electrons lost by photosystem 2 during photoionization. Hopefully this made sense. Do take time to understand this as it is complex. Okay, once the protons have been pumped into the thylakoid membrane by photoionization, they move via ATP synthase into the stroma. As they do, ATP is made from ADP and inorganic phosphate. Light is also absorbed by photosystem 1, which ionizes it. The electron it loses is used to reduce NADP, and the electron lost by photosystem 2 is used to reduce photosystem 1. Next, the proton that has moved into the stroma and the electron lost by photosystem 1 is used to reduce NADP to form NADPH. We say that NADP is the final electron acceptor. Compare this to oxygen, which is the final electron acceptor in respiration. Hope that made sense too. I understand this is complex, so it's important to note that all these processes are also occurring simultaneously. Okay, plants have another process of making ATP, and this is called cyclic photophosphorylation. As the word suggests, it involves making ATP using light, and this is a cyclical process. This process only occurs in photosystem 1. The electrons released from photosystem 2 are passed into photosystem 1 via electron carriers, and I described this previously. As they do, a small amount of ATP is made. This way of ATP production does not produce reduced NADP, i.e. NADPH. Okay, now we come to the last stage of photosynthesis, and this is the Calvin cycle which is a light independent stage. There are four main stages. Firstly, ribulose bisphosphate, RUBP for short, is a five carbon compound which joins with carbon dioxide to make 2-glycerate-3-phosphate, which is a three carbon compound. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme Rubisco. The G3P made is reduced and converted to triose phosphate. This process requires ATP and a hydrogen atom from reduced NADP. Hence, NADPH becomes NADP again, so it can be reduced by the light dependent stage. A point to note is that this is all you need to know for A level. It is much more complex in real life. Now let's understand the importance of ribulose bisphosphate regeneration. Five of every six triose phosphate molecules made are used to regenerate RUBP, and one of every six triose phosphate is used to make organic compound. In this case, it's often glucose. If RUBP isn't remade, the Calvin cycle would stop, 
and this would also stop photosynthesis. A few points to note is that two triose phosphate molecules are needed to make glucose. So the Calvin cycle needs to turn six times to make one molecule of glucose. Essentially, photosynthesis is one of nature's most inefficient process. It's amusing how the most important and the most common process is actually done in the worst way possible. All right, we've come to the end of this rather information-laden tutorial. These are the points we covered today. As usual, use them as questions to consolidate your understanding. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.